Mic check. Good afternoon, guys. What is going on? Here. Very, very sideways trading day again from yesterday. Continuing, continuing our sideways move, building a lot of support here. Uh, the movement's great, though. The, the intraday movement is definitely great. We don't specifically need to be a part of the intraday move in the market. And I've talked a lot about that recently. Biggest thing is that most of the trading now is that we've been in position for about a week now, over a week in most circumstances. The only thing that watching intraday will do is probably hurt you because there's a lot of up and down. You could say today the market was up, the market was down, the market was up, the market was down, the market was up, the market was down, and now the market's up if you're watching intraday. What's the reality? It's sideways. It's just sideways trading. We're at all-time high, turning sideways. Very bullish. Very bullish. Continuing the move. There's been no, no questions of do we need to get out of these positions or anything like that. Uh, the new opportunities have been great. Things like Snap uh, is really... This is a great move. And again, I talked a lot, I've been talking a lot about when I post a new chart, when there is a new breakout. Again, it's not that I have an idea. It's just this is what price is doing. So we, you know, I'm just showcasing what price is doing in terms of some trend lines and uh, the breakout is, is what's there. But it's after these breakouts, that's when the move comes. Taking advantage of things like this. This is not a part of our long term trade from back here. You could have gotten to these positions. We, we got into. Uh, we got into other positions like Twitter early, right? Didn't get into Snap. We were in Facebook early, right? Got into Facebook right on this breakout here, right? Again, the other layout has the trend lines. You can see that chart. Uh, and so those three, Snap, Twitter, Facebook, we've gotten into them at different times. And this is where that difficult part of trading comes in where you take a trade like Facebook here, right? And we made it multiple times now off of this, this pullback. We took the trade again. This is when the 25th came. We bought everything. And now it's just been continuing, right? That's great. We keep pushing this position. Another fantastic day on this this chart again. 2% is a lot on options. We're making a killing on this trade here. But it's so important that we continue to add on to what makes it a good trade and what's making growth do so well right now, right? And so when we take these other trades, something like Twitter here, we talked a little bit about this candle here coming into uh, coming into this week. And the ability to continue with this trade is important and it's really an addition to that other trade from Facebook. It's an addition to the growth trade. It's just a little bit later, right? We took those trades pretty early back here. To be able to take these trades still is important and where profit and loss for everyone's gonna be very different, but those that are able to do this, uh, this ability to go take a trade, after we've already taken a lot of trades, and I'm gonna use Amazon as an example here. Amazon was bad back here. This is when we were taking those trades from the 25th going into the further on the rally. Amazon was not really doable over here. But being able to remove that idea and also the fact that all of growth has already put a ton of points on to go take that trade here and to go make this 2% here today and realize that there's so much potential above here that price doesn't just stop moving. This is where your profit comes in. That's where the profit comes in, the ability to add on positions when something's already happened. And it's difficult, right? It's very difficult to make those, to make decisions like that. And I mean, at the end of the day, it still does come down to whoever's, whoever's aware of the most is going to make the most. And you're, you have to sort of have such a broad look right now. And you can say that, and I made this comment yesterday, that you can say that everything's going up. And so when you do that, that means that you just, you can be a part of anything. You have to just do something. This is where if you haven't done something, there's still opportunities that those are really should be at the forefront of what you take, right? Back here, you could have bought anything, right? Uh, <laughs> you, you could have bought anything, right? It doesn't matter. But now this is where it's important to get out of that understanding of, okay, I could have bought anything here. Everything went up. Now it's very specific again, and this is where we go in and out of these ideas of very active stock picking and the ability to take trades and specifically the options that we choose in relation to those, whether it's a short-term idea or a longer-term idea, that risk-reward of being able to put that position on now. How do you take that trade right now after you've already taken this trade or if you didn't take it at all, right? There's something, again, there's some, there's a, it, it's not so much that, you made mistakes if you didn't take trades here, but is it a mistake now to take the trade here? 
that's where now you start to really you hurt yourself by making your opinion the one that matters when it's the market and the price that matters right and, and so there's a lot there's still a lot to be done there's still a lot of things that you can be a part of uh this square rate move continuing today again you've got a, you have a ton of charts that look like this right i posted so many these moves that are coming within this range from this this supply level to the trend line is where a lot of the points are going to be made in the most important part of that is they're going to be made quickly it's not that they're just going to reach a certain price level it's that they're going to reach that very quickly and so when you look at these charts uh, like i was just showing the twitter chart here very important to understand this idea that this is the distance this is the area that's going to be covered the quickest and that's where you make your money it doesn't matter if price comes up here you make your money in this area this is your 100 percent trade here from support to resistance that's your 100 percent on the snap chart this here is your 100 percent from this support which you you broke the resistance at support now it's from here to the trend line that you're going to make your trade once it stops moving you're out of the trade you can take another one but this is where the zone we operate this is just where we operate and this is where we make our money right it's in between levels and we specifically hunt for these areas and we take advantage and capture in between those areas because there's specific things that are going to happen in that. Some good examples are semiconductors right now. We're taking a lot of semiconductors and a lot of this trade was preemptive and we're taking, this is the move right here, this straight path. As soon as this is done, we're gonna take that and that's hundreds of percent. And then we'll take another trade there, right? You, there, there's a lot of different examples. AMD, for instance, is is a good example where it has been pretty slow, but it's still a lot. This is a lot, and it's the move from here to here that's gonna make you all the points. This is already great. You have a baseline built up if you took this trade early. It's the fact that it's this move that's gonna matter. And you have a base so that if this does come down, you can exit the position and transition into a new one, into a new position with a new expiration. And so these kind of, the ability to take that trade here Again, it's so pivotal to be able to actually take that trade and not to be sleeping on it. It's again, it's going to separate everybody because if you take the trade here, now you have to manage it from that point and not from down here, right? Yes, it's hindsight. You can say, well, we'll buy low, sell high, but in the moment, you don't know, of course. Uh, Google, right? Google continues here. This is where you can be like, well, it already went three, <laughs> three and a quarter percent here. Why would we buy it here at all time high on a gap? And then we made over 4%. And then why would we hold it here? Because now we just got another 1.5%. Is there any signs that it's going to stop, right? The ability to keep pushing those, this 1% here is a lot of points on the options. It's a ton. Yes, this is one thing. And yeah, if you made some bonehead mood of buying April monthlies, you would have taken profit on that candle. Absolutely. Because you just made, I don't know, a ridiculous amount of percent for no reason because you're gambling but a lot of these again don't cut your legs off give yourself room to run now there there, there are some other there are some other things uh today that i will say are definitely very specific and and so you're not going to always be perfect on on some of these things so things that did well today are sort of outside of the bounds of, of everything and more of just a continuation of what's been going on uh, if you think if you think back to yesterday, yesterday we kind of just traded flat, and there was tickers that sort of did their own thing as well and did well. Those all continued today, and that's that's very much a, a theme that we've been seeing, where the market can trade flat and tickers go and and move their own velocity. That's what we try to be a part of, but there's nothing in that moment that's telling us to go do that, and so those trades can be hard. So. Today could definitely be a difficult day, uh, but this is where those individual tickers that we've been pinpointing are very good, and and they produce a, an, they at least produce a no downside risk and potential reward into the future sort of uh, situation, so that you're not in a situation where trading flat is a bad thing it's actually a good thing because it's potential there's potential there and that's where going into the next day you want to be in positions travel has continued today but it's really easy again to look at this and and have questions about it you just have to just let it you have to just let it be right you can't overmanage these trades 
if you over like it's there's so many different ways I can look at this and be like I got to get out of this position uh, today, but you just have to just leave it, just leave it, and and let it actually be obvious. It's up on the day. It's up a percent and a half on the day. Yes, I can take this, and if you have short term positions, you 100% take this. But no one is in a no one's in a situation where they bought down here and have April monthlies, and they're still in. You would have already been out. <laughs> and so everyone's sort of, you're already in a longer term situation anyway, right? Uh, we, have, we have 30 seconds to close. There, there's nothing to really see on the market. It's, this is exactly what you want to see. We're sitting right at all time highs. That means everything that we've thought, our theory is still true. It's holding all time high. It's trading into the upside. It's not taking any long positions off. There's zero long positions being taken off anywhere nowhere value growth nothing's being taken off and so that's such an important thing to note and again it's this intraday motion doesn't it just doesn't matter there's nothing here that matters and and that does make things difficult this is why you had to have already been in you should have already bought right you should have already bought and this is where if you didn't buy you need to be very specific on what you're doing and you need to know why you're buying it now when you didn't buy it before right um, and then also Again, opportunity cost. You cannot be sitting in a position that's getting beat up right now. Good example, Chinese tickers today got beat up, had to get out of them immediately. You want to see what I'm talking about? Let me give you a good little quick purview. Okay, I took PDD here. What happened on PDD? Let's take a look. And because this is important because I want to be a part of these positions. This is something that I actually, I have a lot of confidence on. So we take this position here. How do you manage this? Well, just like I've said before, you do nothing. You keep letting this push. And this is a lot of points. This is a lot of points. This gap was a lot of points here. What happens today? As soon as this thing does this, what did it do? That's 4.5%. This candle, it's, as soon as that dad boy opens and it starts to sell, how do we already know beforehand that this is going to happen? Because we can see it over on this side. Here's the hang thing. And so we saw it on China. What did I say would, was going to need to happen on the China side? You're going to need to see more. Now, this I like. This, I'm fine with this trend. But the way this capitulated itself over to our market, it's important to remember the, the way this timing was very strange. This is last Thursday. This is last Thursday. This is the first day that the Hang Seng opened up. It was today on Wednesday. There was a lot of time in between this. This is still a higher low and a higher high. This is still trending. But the way this interacted with our candles, it's this is an important note. Look at the way that this it, it developed. This is the th last Thursday, but do you see how we had two extra candles that were not accounted for on on the other Asian market? And so this continued to trend, but then we had this candle. The way we interacted with this move made it very difficult, but it made it in such a sense that you had to react in that moment. I'm still betting on this, and I took a lot of these trades at the lows. If you look at a lot of these tickers, you either did nothing or you kept you put things on lows. I talked about the BABA trade already. The same thing happened here. Same thing happened. You want to take this trade, and we got 2.5% yesterday. What happens today? You're, you're down. You gave the points back, right? But am I going to sit here and say, well, did something change? Or is it very technical? This is difficult. There's just, there's nothing you can do, right? There's literally nothing you can do here. And so you either get stopped out, enter a new position, hold the position. It comes down to a confidence and an idea. And this is where the, the mumbo jumbo comes in of there's nothing fundamental. There's nothing technical. It's an overall feeling and an overall thing. And you're going to have to just make these trades actually happen and be a part of them if there's going to be something there. This is where opportunity cost is important because you don't put your money on this if you're if uh, if you're not already in the other things, right? If if you're not a part of the growth move happening, if you're not a part of the value move on our equity market, then those are the positions you need to be in. So the reason why I'll take a position like this is I'm already fully positioned into all of those growth tickers. I'm fully positioned on the Dow on the value side right? I'm fully positioned on this stuff. And the rest is just for some extra, some, some extracurriculars, if you will. 
it's not so much that I'm banking on that. So it's not my one trade, right? This is where there's so many things that I could see where if you only make it a couple trades and you're putting your money somewhere, it, if it's not obvious to you where you should be putting your money and you're trying to put money on things and make things work, then you're doing the wrong thing. That idea of what I'm saying with China is I'm trying to make it work because I, I see it happening and I'm not waiting for it. You could just wait for it. Go wait for it and just then put the money in. I'm trying to do something else there. If right now you're trying to do that with all of your trades, then you're doing something very wrong. You're doing something very wrong because this should be very obvious. This move should be very obvious. And if you're not a part of something here and you miss this, then it means you're trying way too hard and you're not in the right position. You're doing something very wrong. So keep this in mind as we go forward because again, these two last days are great days for positions and they should not be beating you up. This is nothing got taken profit. So if you're in any positions from here and you got beat up, then you did something very wrong. I have some positions that got beat up in these last two days because I made mistakes on the trades through here, but I could have got out of them because they were very short term. So again, sometimes you got to remember your short term positions and your long terms are extremely different, where if they don't continue to move, you have to get out of them. I've been bringing them up when, when we're on here on the call is that there's some positions where it makes the move and I'm just going to get out of it. I always talk about pushing winnings, but if risk reward's not there and I have so much reward right now, I'll take it. Take it right now. And there's some of these things are going to happen, right? Some of these things are going to happen where it just doesn't need to keep going. Nothing goes straight up. Nothing goes straight up. Now, I expect the way that these two candles formed here that we finish the week off strong. I expect us to finish the week off strong and I expect all time highs. I expect all time highs. That's just on, on, the, on the NASDAQ. We're already all time high on S&P, on the Dow, right? Uh, small caps don't really count right now because, again, the average is, is made up of some components like regional banks and then the oil side. In the oil side, uh, again, we've talked about, bring it up real quick because it is important. The oil side, there's an expectation of long term. Uh, this is going to continue trending into long term. I don't think anyone doesn't think that. Everyone thinks that. And then there's just this really big short-term volatility. We've seen this everywhere. This big short-term volatility for, for a couple of weeks that all of this happens and then price goes. There's a reason why I'm still betting on all of energy and oil, right? There, there's no reason not to be there, but you have to understand short-term volatility is going to fuck with you. Small caps get really messed up with that because they're smaller. They don't actually handle <laughs> those situations well. And so the distance between everything is, is a lot larger on a percent level, right? So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Um, but so we have two days here, right? And so I, I would say, I would say for, for those of you that even if, if you're in long positions and then you have nothing to play with and you have some cash to play with in short term, it's we have Thursday and Friday here. I would be, again, I would have put, I, I put a bunch of positions on here at the low here. I think this is one of those situations where you get aggressive you can wait until open to put the trade on. Some of the positions what I wanted to do was put it on and capture overnight. I, I, see, I see enough risk reward that if you think about the percent here, right? And it's hard because we all kind of have different situations. But if we put it into perspective, if I take a trade, uh, let me get like more specific here. You take a trade like, well, hold on, something like plug, right? Plunk. Plug, ENDP, uh, I type in the chat. I'm taking this trade at the low here. You know what I did? I put this trade on at right before two o'clock. Put this trade on right before two o'clock, right on this low. Right in here at the support, and I put this trade on and didn't wait. And I put this trade on. Think about this in terms of risk board, and I put short-term positions on this. I'm talking very short-term, short-term bets. If you think about the risk reward here, right? Okay. What's my highest risk? My risk is that I'm going to get stopped out of this position, right? How much could I get stopped out by? Well, it's not going to be it's not going to be a situation where I lose the whole premium, right? You're not going to ever lose the whole premium in your options. I would say the most I could possibly lose on this would be 10%. Where if we opened a couple percent lower on the underlying, that would be about a 10% loss. That's not very likely because that's not how these things work. You you don't really open that many points lower on a support like this and that would mean that there's just something completely off 
and if it did, you'd still be able to get some sort of market maker to take your position off and you go to the bid and you wouldn't lose more than 10%. Okay, so I'm risking 10% by pushing this overnight. What's my potential reward? If this opens up a percent higher, how many points is that on the options? I'm probably making at least more than my risk on 1%, right? What am I really looking for a reward? Well, if we get a couple percent tomorrow, we're already getting up into a level of 20, 30% gain on the options that I bought down here at low because I'm taking the risk, remember, taking the risk. So I'm going to get paid for that if this opens higher. And if it then gets momentum off of its open, so if it opens a percent higher and then it gets bid off that and gets momentum, what's going to happen in my position? Those options are going to start to become pretty hot and get momentum and get points. 5% tomorrow on plug would be 100% on the position I picked up here. 5% tomorrow would be 100% if it went from bid right from the start up to that point. Am I going to be like, well, that's, that's a simple trade. And this is where those individual positions where it takes one trade, some of you fucking take months to go make your percent and you're diddling around. If you take these enough, and again, my strategy is different. I, I cast a very wide net and I try to find these opportunities like this everywhere. And I'm not always going to get paid on them. I always say it's about 30% of the time I'm going to make 100%. The other 70% of the time, it's not that I lose all of it. It's just it's not 100%, right? Is this going to be a part of the 30% that I make 100% on tomorrow in one day? Well, it's really nice to make 100% in one day on a sizable amount of money, isn't it? And so it's, again, it's really hard to conceptualize this. And this is where you just have to keep doing it and doing it and doing it and realize that you can do it. You have to know what's possible. It's really hard to look at this and say, this looks good down here. That's not the point. It's really not the point. You're buying on a support and you're buying on something that others, there's just something, there's not, it doesn't make much sense. It doesn't make much sense. Why? Well, look at growth right now. Look at growth in the rally here. Didn't we just get a whole bill for, for clean energy and all this different shit? Isn't it directed that way and with industrials, right? We understand that selling came in. X is the best example. All this speculation for the bill, and then the bill comes, and then what happens? You get some take profit on it, right? Are we going to bet that this is not going to go to the upside, right? That's a little bit more long-term, and it dictates our ability to take a short-term trade. So it's, it's taking something macro, right, in a flow idea, and it's understanding that this is bullish in a, lo in, a, in a larger sense. There's more to it, and there's, a big, there's different factors that make this bullish. But it's then the ability with us and the way that we trade, we're all small traders. None of us are big boys, right? None of us are truly whales. We've got small accounts. None of us are billionaires, right? We're not institutions. So we can get in and out and make our money quickly. So much to the fact that we can make it overnight. We're not day trading and scalping and shit. We're looking to put the risk on to make the reward on a trade in a short-term sense. And so that's where when trades like here on plug, is I'm going to take that trade at the low today. And if I don't need it to go all the way up here, I don't need it to go do 50 fucking percent in uh, over here, 20%. I need it to do 5% and I'm going to make 100%. But it's so hard to look at it as just that candle. We did these trades over here. Right over here is where I took that trade. This over here was over 100%. This is over 100% here. And I talked about this over here. This is over 100% here. And you did nothing. All you did was buy it on support. It didn't need to work out. If it didn't work out, you move to the next one. And you probably made another 30 trades right there at the same time, right? But that money right there, you just doubled your money. You didn't wait a year to double your money. You didn't wait two years to double your money. You did it in one day or two days. And what did you risk? You risked the same that you risk on every trade. And you risked some time and some effort, right? Some extra hours of work, right? The charts that I post every night, you know, you're risking some extra work. Buying snap here at open. Did I, do I need it to make, do I need it to go up 30%? No, I'm trying to trade it in the area where I'm going to make my 100% or more. I don't need it to do the whole move. I don't need it to do this whole 40% mumbo jumbo move. What I need to do is that when I buy this fucker, it continues to make the mood and it does it fast and then I'm out of it. 
and I take it and I run, right? We're literally highway robbers, the boogeyman of the chain. We find these areas and we go. Most people don't want to buy this here. You know, we bought a lot down here. We bought Facebook all over here. No, I didn't take the snap trade over here. There's nothing you can trade on this day. We took this trade today. You made 6%. Some of you probably got out of that position today, right? Some of you probably did. Some of these, again, we don't, I don't emphasize it enough. We make our money in such a, it's such a, the swing idea is such a strong idea. And it's, you have to remember what's possible in that time and where that risk reward becomes, it just becomes so tilted one way where your risk is the same as any other trade. And the reward though, it's not about the reward over a certain, it's, it's not about the reward over a longer period of time. When we look at these targets, it's about the reward in a couple days, sometimes overnight. That's where that weekend trade principle comes in. If you push it over the weekend, you're putting a certain amount of risk on to get a paid for reward. It's, it's not gambling when we're doing it consistently and disciplined, right? That's where it's hard for some people to remove the lotto idea. When you put a trade on, like, so those trades I just made today at those lows, some people would call those lottos that, oh, it needs to go up tomorrow to make the money. The reality is, is that if you're doing that and that's your method and that's your consistency, you're playing the goddamn numbers, right? You're playing numbers. It's a numbers game of probability. The probability is, is that I'm going to make money. That's the probability. I'm going to do it every time because as soon as, uh, as long as it's continuing to pay me, why would I do anything different? And that's where this dis the discipline comes in from a good strategy. You guys should not be making up your own damn strategies. There's no such thing as being novel and coming up with cool strategies. If you have one uh, and you think that it's great, it's, that, that's awesome, right? The strategy I have, it works. It causes you to be disciplined, right? It does. It causes discipline because when you get paid and you make money, that will cause you to keep doing something. Every day you're going to wake up and you're going to do the same thing every single time because it keeps working. You keep getting paid, right? And you keep your emotions the same. Your biases the same. You're able to keep problem solving. These kind of ideas, it's so important because, again, here we go again. We're getting, we're getting into these situations. You have to be making the money now. Those of you that are not making the money now, you just need to scrap it. You got to scrap whatever you're doing, right? And do something else. Some of you are going really long-term. Understand whether you're a long-term investor or you're trading. Are you trading or are you just putting your money into things and you think you're trading by putting buying options? You're buying like long-term options and you think you're, you're trading, but you're not. Because if you're not doing these things where you're taking, again, I talk about these breakouts and we take those breakouts every time. If you're not making the money in this area and you're just making it over time, then that's, that's great. That's what you should do. This is just a higher, this is just a higher degree of activity. Right. You should. All you have to do is put your money in the S&P and you'll make money every year. You don't have to give a shit about any of this. You can just go live your life. Put your money in the market anywhere in here and go push it for the next couple of years. Right. Take it out as you need it. Take it out as you need it. Don't fool yourself. Some of you are still fooling yourselves. Not to be a dick. Some of you are still fooling yourselves that you're you're trading and you want to make it work. Just go put your money into a long term thing and let it just ride. Go put your money in the S&P. You're never going to get hurt. It might over time, you won't be, some years you won't be able to take the money out. You'll have to wait for it. But some of you are not beating the average. Some of you are not beating the average. You might get stressed yourself out. I'm not saying anything specifically. I'm just saying we need to keep being active and, and really keep the, you know, keep the pressure up, right? And so, you know, when we look at some of these things, there's still things out there and you got to be hungry and keep, Honestly, just keep fucking whacking away at some of this stuff because it's this move here, 100%. You could have, you, okay, you had, had to put some extra risk on. I didn't take the support buy down here. I took the trend line. If you took the support buy down here, you easily made 100. Okay, I didn't take the support buy. Okay, I waited the extra point. But the point is here is that your money was made here. You can make more money up here, but we're not trying to make money over, over, a year, we're going to take hundreds of these trades that make a certain amount, and that's what we make over a year, right? And that's where it takes, when I say it takes one trade, that's because it, they're all just one fucking trade, right? They're not, it's, it's all the same idea, but they're all trades. And it's not like you can get away with, 
you can't get away with only making one lucky trade and then making a bunch of poor trades. They need to all be the same. And so when I say it takes one trade, they should all be the same. They should all be the same one trade. Very rarely, very rarely, and I always say it, is when I'm taking a trade that's not following my rules and my discipline. In those situations, they call for the it depends role where you are doing something differently because you think you might be solving something in a different way. And sometimes it will happen. There are times when that's going to happen, usually when it's preemptive. So those preemptive moves back here when we took those trades for growth, that is more preemptive in an understanding of, again, that's a more macro understanding of how money's going to flow back into growth. But even then, you're still following some very strong principles and rules and disciplines to make money. And you're in that situation, you're not looking to take trades that are not going to get you paid in that moment because it goes, we're moment to moment because again, things don't just keep, they don't keep going unless you really zoom out over years. Yes, they just keep trending up, right? And we're not, you can make money like that 100% and one day we'll all be like that. We're not going to be trading. We're trying to take advantage of the moment and know that, okay, in this moment, we can make more money than just putting our money into an average. We can make money. This Remember this Twitter trade over here? This whole thing through here? The amount of money that we can make here is more than a few years of putting my money into a Vanguard account. The money I made in here on these type of trades, it's more. It's just more. And we're just betting that we're smarter in the moment than the average is, right? And we're going to be a little bit riskier and, and take the chance to go do that right now, right? It's like all these, the difference, it, it's just like all these Bitcoin people. I'm a Bitcoin people. Am I not? Some of you are too. Now I'm not trading it. I put my money in last summer, before the summer, I put my money in and that was it. And I haven't touched it, haven't done anything. Gonna let it go to 100,000 and then go take my profit. I'm done, right? We're basically the same, but it's understanding what lane you're in, right? You just have to understand what lane you're in. What are they doing there? Well, they th what are they doing? They think it's supposed to go up. So what are they... Why, why do they trade it so much? If they expect it to keep going up, then why are they actively trading it? Well, on their understanding, it's the same as my understanding of the equity market, which is that I can beat the average. Instead of just putting it in over time, I can beat it. And I can take advantage in that moment. The reality is that they're not doing that with Bitcoin, right? They can't do that. That's why we just put the money in there and let it run, right? It's like saying you could do that with, with commodities and stuff. You learn very quickly. And I don't have firsthand experience with commodities traders. They're not making trades over every single day, right? They're not scalping and shit, swing trading. They're making it over fucking a long period of time, right? The same with those things. Equity market's the only one where you could take advantage of this one moment, right? And this one moment and go make the points right there. And that's a whole, that's everything. Th this was all the money. That's, that's the money. You don't even need it to do anything else. It, it could literally be done and you could just take the profit there and what do we need it to trend for two months for and make money over two months if we can make it in one week, right? And so remember that that's where the money's made. The money is not made based on how price, which way price goes and what price, and what price point a ticker reaches. It's how quickly it does that and how quickly we're going to get paid because the money today is worth more than the money tomorrow is. Because the opportunities are now, they're not tomorrow. There will be more opportunities tomorrow. But if we're not taking the one now, why would we take the one tomorrow either? Right? So that's where I talk so much about if you don't take the trade, when we took these trades, if you don't take the trade here preemptively or on the breakout, then why would you be able to take it now? Because if you couldn't do it then, why would you be able to do it now? What's the difference? Nothing changed. Now it's more risky. Now you're willing to pay more for it. So now that it costs more, you're willing to do it, right? That's not to say that we're not going to do it, but doesn't it make it a hell of a lot easier that we've already done it and we've already made the money on it, right? And so again, this is the one cycle of the market. I've talked about how the cycles are going to change and the debt markets and everything, but this is the one consistent cycle in the equity market is that you're going to break out and that's what we need to capture. It's going to consolidate that's when we need to be solving problems and being careful. We're not trading. We're waiting and being patient and looking for our next opportunity for the next breakout. 
Because when the next breakout comes, that's the one that we're going to enter and capture it again. This timing changes. It changes, but it's always the same, right? And we go from ticker to ticker, from place to place, and take everything that's there. And that's what we have to do. You can't be changing up the whole scheme and in the middle of the breakout go, oh, now I'll take it. That's not how we trade. We go from one thing to another. Some of you are still chasing dogs. You're chasing dogs and there's a ticker that you like and you have some sort of, you don't have any damn information on it. Everyone's got the same information, right? So Twitter and everybody likes to think like, oh, look, see the numbers coming out. I think it's gonna be good. And you keep trading it every month. You keep looking at it and you wanna make it work. That's not how it works. You don't get to pick and choose. It doesn't work like that, right? That's not how you're gonna make money. You're better off removing that from your purview forever and never looking at it again, even if there is an opportunity there so that you can actually go from place to place. It doesn't matter what the ticker is, the company, who it is, what's involved. It's about the money that it can give you, right? Go from ticker to ticker and capture the gain. And if it's not paying you, then get the fuck out of it, right? If you're in something that's not making you money, leave. Don't trade it. Good example is NEO. We like EVs, right? You know what we don't like is NEO. I haven't traded NEO in months. We haven't traded it in months, right? Look at this thing. We like China. Perfect. We like EVs. Perfect. That checks both of those boxes. Oh, but it hasn't been doing anything forever. <laughs> so don't trade it, right? Stop looking at it. Remove it from your whole mind. Anything that you want to do here, I bring it up as an example, right? I bring it up as an example. But can you take these trades over another? That's the question. Would you take it over Tesla? No, you wouldn't. So then stop trying to trade that one. Would you take Tesla over Ford right now? No, so stop taking that one, right? Yes, we are part of those moves and we're betting on ARK and stuff, but using the NEO as an example, you can always go to the next one and the next one. If there's something that's better, then trade the better. If there's something that's leading, trade the, trade the leader, right? Some of you do not have the capital to go be trading worthless things. So you got to rewind, rewind, come back, come back, come back, and go trade the thing that's actually working. If something works, then do what works. If you're trying to make something that's not working, you're never going to make it work because you can't even do the thing that is working, that's already working and paying people. If you can't make the trade that already is paying, you're not going to make the thing that's making you lose make it win for you. It's not going to happen. Your opinion and what you think doesn't actually matter, just like mine doesn't. And that's why the market's our teacher. Price is what gives us the lessons. And we continue to trade on price. And that's it. We have to solve some problems. But at the end of the day, it's not willing it into existence. We're just taking what's there, right? And a lot of the times it's already happened, right? We don't get to be magic balling it. It's just what's already happened and what's going to come from that because of what has happened, right? Consolidations lead to moves. The move isn't predetermined. It's just based off of the behavior of all of us, how we're going to be a part of this. And especially now that everyone's realizing how exactly breakouts are really forming. Yeah, I can be pretty specific with trend lines and, and levels. And those are great. And that's, a, that's obviously a very important, I mean, it's the most important resource to be very exact. And we can be like, okay, I'm pretty damn confident on this level. But again, it's, it's the ability to be like, okay, I need to remove myself from this damn equation already and just let price take me on this ride, right? S&P is going to keep going up. If you're not beating the S&P on your options, then just trade the S&P until you can beat it and then go to the next thing, right? That's the end of it. That's the reality. Either way, we had some great... I, I really do like the most recent charts. If you didn't... Look, some of these, again... Uh, important, important note, just a, a last note. It, yes, we've had, it's been very good with the recent breakouts, but you have to remember the cycle of the day. We just had the breakout. So I can go post something like this here, DAL. The move happened here and now I post the chart, right? Because this is where the breakout is happening. And then it's really easy to be like, well, now it's down today. Remember where you are in the move and what it means to be able to go trade this from here and how it differs for something like Snap here, right? You have to be able to realize the difference between between all of these things and understand where your opportunity is. Again, it's going to come with time of how you take these trades. And this is where you're just trying to capture as many things as possible. If you don't have the capital to capture everything possible, excuse me, 
then you need to be more specific on exactly what your opportunity is, which is what I just brought up with uh, things that are at lows and taking the chances where those are, which aren't going to be affecting your downside. You got to be able to get that capital up, right? You're, this is where, again, if you don't have more than $100,000 to trade with, it's, it's fucking hard, man. That's just hard. What I mean, it's not easy. You're never going to have, it's never easy to begin with, but if you don't have much money, and you're trying to make little, you know, you're putting little snacks out there for your dog chasing. You're not going to really make money. You're talking about a thousand dollar trade, a hundred percent on a thousand dollars, only another thousand dollars. That's not going to be, that's not the life changing trade I'm talking about, right? So you got to remember exactly what lane you're in. And if you are at that lower capital and that's all you're willing to put on, then you need to make trades that are going to fucking pay. They have to be riskier. Otherwise, there's no point of trading. Just go put that in a Vanguard, right? So again, small capital, you got to be risky and go fucking put the money on the line. You have to, you're going to have to level up your game, do those things as possible. I've talked about it before. Uh, it's entirely possible to go take a $20,000 account and take it past 100 and, and bring it up from there. It's entirely possible. You just have to, you have to be willing to, to risk it. And it's going to take a lot of knowledge to do that, right? And it's going to take time to do that. It may take you 10 years to get your account to 20,000 and then it might take a mil it might take 1 year to make a million dollars from there right it just depends but when you're going to make the money it will happen quick right and it comes from making those fucking trades that are worth something there, there's risk involved otherwise vanguard it guys go put it in the vanguard <laughs> all right thursday tomorrow i will be here for the morning uh, i just been doing some things here in the city been busy with some meetings and stuff trying to be a slum lord so uh that's been taking up a little bit of my time not to say that the trading doesn't take up all my time but you know how it is you, you get obligations i will i will see you in the morning uh already have some interesting charts for tonight so i've been posting a lot of charts again it's about the discipline and repetition that's what you learn from uh those you you don't have to trade the charts or anything like that you should learn from the charts that's what you fucking pay for that will change everything if you're able to understand those things it will change everything again it's the confidence right it's not me telling you things telling you to go buy this it may be someone else in chat that tells you something that helps out and i think today I had good energy on the floor when i wasn't here that is helpful because you have people like-minded remember it's not me telling you to do something it may help it's the actual chart you have to understand the chart and that's what you're here for are those ideas because those ideas are everything. The price is everything. I'm not the fucking teacher. The market is, right? Just relaying the information. It's just, it's like I'm a translator, right? I'm just translating the information. You look at this chart, I'm just translating it for you. That's all. Just translation. Now, not everybody sees it like this. Absolutely not. But I've got a pretty good read, right? Pretty good read. So read the damn charts. Go learn something from the charts. I don't have to tell you. I post, I, the lines are on the chart. Go learn from them, right? It will step your game up. It will change everything. If you've got, you've got every understanding of it and look back at the other charts, how it moved, all we're trying to do is capture that next breakout. Z here. Again, last point, we're getting the hell out of here. Gonna in, you know, enjoy your night, everybody. We're here to capture the next breakout. Consolidate and breakout, and we're here to capture it. If it takes a million charts and only one of them breaks out, then I'll do a million charts so that I can capture that one breakout because it's that one breakout and that one trade we're going to make over 100% on, and that's all it takes, right? It only takes one of the charts to break out in the way that we're looking for and planning for to make the money, right? And then it's done. And then you're going to have a fuck ton of money. And you're, you're done. You don't even care anymore. And you do it the next time. When you're ready and whenever you want to do it, you have the tools to be able to do it, right? You can come in here once a month, find a chart, wait for it. And if it happens, then you're there for it and you can get to capture it. Make your money and go back and drink some margaritas on Turks and Caicos Beach, right? I'll see you guys in the morning. Watch out for the charts. Enjoy your night, evening, morning, wherever you are. See ya.